Now we have just a couple minutes left, so why don't we take a moment and look at how we can debug our embedded system by looking at the serial wire viewer. So before we can initialize a serial wire viewer, we're going to have to enable trace inside of our debug environment. So one of the things that we're going to want to do, we'll stop our debugging session. We could go into our, our run debug configuration. We're going to want to go under our debugger tab. And if you scroll down here, what you'll find is there's a trace option. Now what we can do is we can select the serial wire viewer, and then we can go and enter in our clock frequency. If you haven't modified the clock at all on the Kinetis K64F development board, what you would find is that it's going to actually be 21 megahertz that we want our clock to be. If you've never used a serial wire viewer before, it may show up automatically as 8 megahertz, but we want to go ahead and set this to 21. Once we set it, we can go ahead and click Apply, then we click Debug. Now, in order to use the Serial Viewer, we're going to want to initialize it. So we can see here in the lower right-hand corner, I have a Serial Wire Viewer trace log, but I don't see any way to actually track which functions the code is executing within. So what we can do before we even start to run our debugger, we're going to want to go up into the Window, Show View, and we're going to want to go down into the Other tab. Now, that's going to give us some additional options. We're going to want to go into the debug underscore SWV folder, and we're going to want to select single wire viewer statistical profiling. Once we do that, so I should now have a serial wire viewer statistical profiling tab. In order to configure that for the information that I want, I'm going to have to come over into the settings for the configuration of the trace. I go ahead and click that. It's going to pop up the serial wire viewer settings for the K64F FreeRTOS debug. What I want to do is make sure that I enable the PC sampling. At that point, I can go ahead and adjust how often I'm sampling the PC counter. In this particular case, maybe we want to go down to, uh, let's go down to about 512. We'll go ahead and click OK. We'll make sure that nothing else is checked. I click OK. Now I'm ready to start recording my trace. So what I'm going to then do, I'm going to go and hit the record button. I'm going to see that my console shows that there's. it's going to tell the ARM co Cortex part. It's going to enable the trace capabilities within the core. Now at this point, I'm ready to start executing my code. Now one of the things I'm going to find is that I won't get live streaming of my statistical profile, but what I can do to make sure that it works is go into the Seal Wire Viewer trace log. I can go and hit run, and then as you can see here, I am receiving information from the serial trace. All I need to do is go and hit pause, and then I should be able to go to my statistical wire viewer, and I can now see what percentage of the different functions in my application are being used for how much of the time. So as you can see here, with a real-time operating system running, we'd expect the real-time operating system to be heavily loading our particular processor. Except if you actually look in here, what we discover is that most of the operating system tasks that are running are all related to the idle task and that we actually have significant amount of available processing power still to write our application. So this is a great way for us to dive into our application code and begin to get a feel for how it actually works. We can see here some of the other tasks that are running. We have an incrementing the task within the OS. We're seeing it run about 0.05% of the time. Our idle task is running at 28.99% of the time. But this is actually being called within the PRV idle task. So these two together show us what our idle time is for the CPU. And we can go in and see every single task that's executed by our software. As you can see, our LED blue and our LED red using such a small amount of time that it's not even showing up in the statistical analysis. This is a great way for us as developers to dig in and see which functions are using up most of the bandwidth of the microprocessor and may require some optimizations.